across now to an ET Now exclusive. My colleague Supriya uh, is uh, catching up with Suresh Prabhu. Let's go across to that. Of the best performing ministers of the Modi cabinet uh, and at commerce and industry and also aviation, there's a lot more expected out of Suresh Prabhu, even though he's got a lot of green on his report card. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Congratulations on the four year of the Modi government. But I think before I go into talking about your achievements, we must talk about the macro picture because there's a lot of concern out there. Uh, and, and I think the concern is on account of crude oil prices. Yes, prices have come down a little globally, but it's the volatility that's causing a lot of concern and which is why the debate back home in India, should there be a relief for the common man? Petroleum and Finance Ministry, I know, are working together because you're an important stakeholder in this as well. Uh, do you believe that getting back the subsidy regime is a solution at all? No, let us look at it firstly. The real answer to the fuel issue mm, mm. is we cannot really depend on imported fuels for a long time. Mm. That means there has to be a strategy of exploring more home and also manufacturing and generating more at home, refining more at home. Mm. So that's one part of strategy which is already put in place. Other part of strategy is to create a non-oil economy mm. over a period of time. Mm. That's why we're working on 175,000, 1 lakh 75,000 megawatts mm. of clean energy generation. So that will also happen. Third strategy is the mobility strategy mm. because you need fuel also for mobility. So for that again we are going in for electric vehicles and everything else. So this again will bring in this. Sure. While we do this, I understand because it's going to take some time. Sure. There are the, these are the transitory issues. Mm. Now how do you deal with this? So one is therefore we are very clear that we want to protect our consumer mm. and internationally also the prices are going up. So we have also taken up this issue that why should this cartelization Mm. result into artificially jacking up prices which is to the detrimental of the interest not only of the consumers mm. but also the producer themselves mm. because after some time there will be a demand glut and then again will happen but for some time you make profit sure. but on a long term you are losing so therefore we are working on all these strategies put together now the macroeconomic picture mm. is very clear mm. that moment you start giving subsidy it affects the poor people again mm. because the moment you create a regime mm. in which your fiscal deficit is not taken care of but we are very clear, Prime Minister is very clear that we must protect the interest of those consumers, mm. the poor people and therefore we are trying to work out the best possible solution which will ensure that poor people are properly protected from the international prices going up. Could that solution involve a windfall gain tax on a company like ONGC? An exp oil exploration company has made big profits you know, the on The best solution is actually including the entire fuel basket also into the GST regime. Hmm. I also feel it as a consumer of it, as a aviation minister, hmm. that if you bring even aviation fuel along with diesel and petrol into the overall ambit of the GST, which will help everybody. So I think this is a one solution that really needs to be looked into, but for that we have to take all the states on board. Hmm. Therefore, I am very happy that even the states are also now started thinking about it. So we hope this happens soon. But Mr. Prabhu, you know, I think uh, both you and the opposition says bring oil under the GST and that will take care of all the woes. But, you know, by training you are a CA, you understand this a lot better than some of the other politicians do. Is it so simple to just bring fuel under the GST because there is a revenue neutral rate and chances are that uh, in places it may cost even higher. So will states be on board A to make fuel more expensive and B to let go of this huge revenue earner? See, one is obvious that mm. somebody has to lose the revenue because if you want to reduce the prices, somebody will foreclose the mm. revenue. Mm. But at the same time, it is the interest of the states and the center at the long term basis because then there will be uniform taxation all over the country. So sometimes on the bordering states, somebody wants to go and fill up a tank there and come back here so he loses revenue. All these issues will get entered. Mm. And I think over a period of time we are seeing a good buoyancy in the revenue stream. Mm. So I think it is maybe a temporary loss for some states, but that would be compensated more because overall economy will be growing up more. Because see what happens, when the fuel is bought under GST, mm. transportation cost will go down. When the transportation cost will go down, obviously it will boost the economy more. More the boost the economy, it's a, it's more a will be the revenue. Cycle. So I think it may not, there may be some loss of revenue for mm. some states mm. on account of this fuel basket. But at the same time, that will be more or less compensated because economy going up, GST overall revenues will increase, so that will get compensated. Is it possible that in the interim, when you look at doing this with the GST, is it possible that uh, the states, and at least the ones ruled by the BJP, and you've got government in 20 odd states, will reduce VAT to start with? There's some speculation that... The see, these are absolutely the states have to... Uh, really be more proactive hmm. because it's not the center tax alone which is really causing the issue it's actually the states which are taxing more hmm. because even today you can see 
the taxation in one state, or the, the price of petrol and diesel in one state Very is so different than other states. So yeah. obviously it's nothing to do with the center. Mm. This is obviously to do with the states. Mm. So I think the states will have to shoulder more responsibility and make sure that over a period of time, consumer interest is not just the responsibility of the central government alone. We are really caring for all the people. Prime Minister is really proactive, pro-people, mm. pro-poor. Mm. But at the same time, states also must share the responsibility of making it happen. So excise duty cut is not a simple solution that the center will look at doing. But sir, I want to specifically ask on your ministry, the trade deficit is on the rise and some people are worried that is India uh, staring at the return of the twin deficit problem. Is that a concern that you share? So this is an important issue. Mm. But you must notice one thing, in the last six years, mm. we have, our exports are not rising. The first year, 1718, in the last, the highest registered exports it was 1718. Yes. Again now, we are seeing some black clouds, dark clouds, mm. when everybody is talking about uh, protectionism, true, people true. are saying, that, no, no, don't bring in, I, my, my country is more important. So these are very serious matters. Mm. But I think we are trying to deal with this. I am going to uh, WTO meeting in Paris tonight. I will mm. meet all the 25 trade ministers, the most important economies of the world. We are trying to take up that issue. But first time we are seeing export rising and our, this year we are even targeting to rise even more. But this is one part. The other part is imports. So imports, major item of import which is really causing fiscal uh, the, uh, trade deficit going up mm. is a issue related to diesel and petrol. Hmm. So we have to work on it in a way, as I told you, to diversify the non-oil economy. And to diversify into non-oil economy, is already we are working on it. We are one of the largest producers of solar power in the world, one of the largest producer now of incremental increase in the renewable energy sources. Hmm. But still, it will take some time. So why we, while we take that time, energy efficiency is another solution which we are working on so that consumption per unit consumption will go down. So that is also we are trying to work on. Hmm. But that is one part of import. Second is gold. So therefore, we are actually, I just posed this topic with the Russian. Hmm. Something like this, can the Russian's gold be done and we can do a joint, because gold is necessary, one is for domestic consumption. Hmm. Wherein we need that for the women wearing, sure, it's sure, a cultural really. issue, we hmm. cannot deal with that hmm. immediately. Hmm. Despite the fact that government has bought in gold bonds and many sure. other things, it is hmm. still not working. Hmm. But we need also some gold for re-export for making jewellery, right. and which we are not using it in a substantial way today. Mm. So uh, if we can work out this, let us take it forward. I just spoke to our Indian ambassador in Russia even now, mm. five minutes ago, and we are trying to take it forward. So that element of gold that is necessary for re-export also can be addressed by way of these images. Indeed, I think uh, on that count, so what you are essentially saying is that there is no need to press the panic button on current account deficit just yet. But sir, uh, just to talk about the rupee, in 2013, because of the taper tantrum, the rupee had fallen substantially, but at that time exports were seeing very robust growth of sorts. Uh, and then of course the rupee has fallen again now. I have a very frank question to ask of you. Do you believe the rupee has perhaps found its real value now? Because many people thought uh, it had appreciated way too much for everybody's concern. And what impact do you see this have on exports? See, you know, the pricing of currency, hmm particularly in India when it is a floating currency, mm. it's a matter of three, four issues. One is inflation. Luckily, India's inflation is down. So therefore, inflation is not causing the rupee flow. Second is the US. This is not just India. All emerging markets are suffering because of little fall in the currency rate. All emerging markets. Mm. Because US is raising rates, sure. so raising rates, so therefore the outflow of capital sure. is happening. Third is the element of how do you get capital flows into India? Mm. So therefore, on that count, again, India is one of the good destinations for FDI. We are trying to promote that more. So I think all these factors put together is going to affect. Trade deficit is another reason why it influences the value of rupee. So I think you are right. We, in a way, that market will determine the rate of rupee. But it is something which on domestic front, our fiscal policies, our macroeconomic policies, are so good that mm. we are resulted into reducing the fiscal deficit, kept it under control. Our trade deficit is something which has just gone up now, like, as I explained to you for the reasons sure. which are beyond our control. But thirdly, inflation, mm. which also causes the rupee, is also under control. And the fourth is the destination of India as an attractive investment, which again will be in capital flows, which in turn will help the currency to stabilize. No, I think your worst critics will say that you've been very, very watchful of the FISC and I think that is where the problems really stem from. So I think congratulations on that front. But uh, if I may ask you a very quick question, you said that you're going to be going for trade talks. Uh, the issue at WTO is on our export promotion schemes. How confident are you that you will be able to continue with this? Because many people believe if the decision were to be adverse, you will have to roll back the schemes and the impact on exports will be obvious. No, sir, this is a very important issue. Mm. In fact, uh, because we have crossed the threshold mm. of uh, per capita income, 
where we could enjoy the benefit of having some protection mm -hmm. against this is already we have crossed that. U.S. has taken us to WTO on this subsidy regime. Sure. We'll first talk to U.S. I'm going there in the uh, next um, uh, week. Mm. I will meet the U.S. trade representative, mm. maybe Commerce Secretary, but we are meeting all important officials to deal with bilaterally. But on the, our subsidy regime, which is actually speaking, we have to, ex we have to explain them properly. Mm. It is not really a subsidy in that sense of the term. It is actually compensation for some of the inefficiency that are there in the system, sure. like transportation and others. Mm. So therefore, we have to handle it. But we are trying to make a regime which will be WTO compatible in which the exporters will not be adversely affected. We have already started working on it. We are working with all the Export Promotion Council, with the Federation of Indian Exporters Organization. We will work out a proper structure which will be WTO compatible. At the same time, our exporters will be properly protected. How concerned are you? You mentioned something which is very right, that you know the world seems to be going in a more protectionist way. The US and China, uh, there were these looming fears of a global trade war. Uh, how, uh, how concerned are you regarding that? Because look at what the US is doing. They are already tightening the H1 uh, B visa rules. Uh, how concerned are you with this snowballing into a larger oh, It's a very serious matter. Mm. I think this is for the first time in the last 40, 50 years after creation of WTO. First mm. time. Mm. We are seeing people challenging the WTO itself. So just imagine that those who have benefited from WTO in the past are now questioning the exact entire existence and the regime of WTO. Mm. Country like India which has suffered in the past because you opened up our True. trade. Yes. This is the time for us to take little advantage of it and therefore it's a really a matter of serious concern. Mm. So that's why we are taking number of measures. One was to call a mini ministerial wherein 53 countries participated. So we are working on it. We are also talking bilaterally to many countries. In fact, one, to, tomorrow morning I will be meeting the 25 trade ministers and having most of them I will be having bilateral meeting. Mm. So we are trying to explain to them that let us try to resolve an issue in a way that global trading system does not suffer. And India has a stake in it because global trading system is very important for us. We also started talk with China. Mm. On the 26th of March, the China's commerce minister, who is very senior in the hierarchy of China, mm. political hierarchy, he came to India. We agreed in writing mm. to not only reduce the trade deficit, but to balance the trade over a period of time. And I am very happy to say that they have taken some concrete measures for market access for Indian products in pharmaceuticals for basmati rice, which we have been struggling for the last several years. Mm. So they sent a protocol immediately. They have done that. I am very happy that our Prime Minister, who met a president of China just one month, exactly one month after that, mm. has also now consolidated his position. So Prime Minister and President of China, their vision of making sure that relations improve even on trade front will also help us to get over some of these issues. That was an exclusive interaction with Suresh Prabhu on what's the latest on the macro, what's the way ahead, and you can catch this entire interview throughout the day today. Also, on our digital platform, you can catch this entire exclusive interview. It's a